Hello, this video is sponsored by Wondrium. I'm Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond and one of those memos pertains to home appliances. Specifically, home appliances that I only encountered after moving to the United States of America. And as I slowly continue this wild journey of moving into my first American house, it occurred to me that I already have some of these home appliances in this very house. And so come join me and apparently my cat as we go and look at five home appliances that I only encountered after moving to America. And if you'd like to follow my new journey of becoming an American, living in an American house with American people and an American cat is actually Russian and you're not subscribed to my channel do that now without further ado let's go and take a look at some stuff oh cat get out of the way you You've heard me talk about ceiling fans, you've heard me talk about air conditioning units, but you haven't heard me talk about one of these. No, it's not an imperial droid, right? It is, in fact, a dehumidifier. It actually isn't. This is editing Lawrence. I've since discovered that what past Lawrence has in front of him there is an air purifier. But the points that he's about to make about dehumidifiers are both salient and necessary. So for the next minute of your lives, you will pretend that the item in question is a dehumidifier. And we'll all go about our lives as if this never happened. Back to you, Pass Lawrence, and you might want to move the air purifier to the side so that we can see you. And it, it's so bloody big that you can't see me. So I'm just... And the reason that I haven't spoken much about dehumidifiers is that A, they're infernally dull, and two, until recently, I didn't even know what they were. Because in Britain, for reasons that are similar as to why we don't have air conditioning units, Dehumidifiers are quite rare. Now, of course, there'll be one or two British people watching going, I've got a dehumidifier, I know! My channel is not scientifically backed. But for the most part, in Britain, we don't use them, and I know they don't because I've done some really deep research on Quora. Whereas in a lot of American homes, you will find them. And of course, one of the chief reasons for that is that here in the Midwest and other parts of the United States of America, it can get ridiculously humid. But you know what? It can in Britain too. So why don't we use dehumidifiers? After all, if you allow humidity to accumulate in your house, it can lead to things like mildew. Well, the reason that people on Quora consistently gave is that the UK simply just doesn't get hot enough to justify it. Which I suppose is fair enough, but we've been using one of these for a couple of years now. And I have to say, the air quality in this house is fantastic since we've been using this. It's not switched on. Have we, have we been using this? We haven't. So the air quality in here is just good anyway. So once I switch this on, I'll have 10 times the oxygen that everybody else has. No, I know it doesn't work that way. And welcome to my kitchen, where I'm eagerly awaiting my ninth cup of caffeine of the day. And while you might think that's weird, I do live with a cat. But in order to facilitate that, I have here a coffee maker, which most Americans will be familiar with. And don't get me wrong, coffee makers do exist in Britain. It's just that they're nowhere near as commonly found as they are in American homes. There's a couple of reasons for this. Number one, just as was the case in my family, us Brits famously prefer tea, whereas us Americans prefer coffee. And a lot of the time when we do make coffee in our British houses, many of us prefer instant coffee, the preparation of which is similar in many ways to making tea minus the tea bag. So often one of these isn't required but a lot of Americans I speak to say that instant coffee is terrible. As somebody who never drank coffee when I lived in the UK I can honestly go either way with it now but ultimately I do prefer having a machine that does what I tell it because again I'm elitist. Now it does already have coffee in it so I'm not going to brew any more you'll just have to make do with this stock footage of coffee being brewed. I think you all know what it's like to see coffee being made, so I don't know why I did that. You may remember in my home tour video that I briefly introduced you to this fridge slash freezer. And I specifically pointed out that it's got this little touch screen that dispenses ice. And the reason that I did that is because A, it was a really cool... <laughs> feature and b we don't really go for this kind of thing in the uk once again our kitchens are quite a bit smaller so that means there's not a lot of room to have fridges that are as tall as i am and as wide as i was about nine years ago and so because of that our fridges don't really have room for bonus features like this and when i talk about bonus features i'm not just talking about ice cubes the thing i really want to talk about is the cool water dispenser 
That's right, instead of having to go through all of the rigmarole of filling your cup with ice, then walking over to the sink and then pouring water into that and then waiting for the ice cubes to cool the water down, you've got a cool water supply right here. It's unbelievable. It is absolutely unbelievable. Although it takes about a minute to pour, which is a bit of a letdown because you're standing here trying to fill the void and the awkward silence between words while it pours and you talk to your audience. Still going, still going. I actually hate this feature. One thing that my cat and I don't hate is birds, although for completely different reasons to each other. Can you remember in the old apartment when I befriended a family of morning doves? Well, ahead of spring, I thought it'd be a great idea to learn more about birding in North America. And so this week, when I've had time in between packing boxes, I've been learning all about birding in the fantastic Wondrium series, the National Geographic Guide to Birding in North America. Did you know, this is unbelievable, right? There is a bird species that only exists in central Florida. Doesn't that blow your mind? It's called the Florida Scrub Jay and looks like this. And already from this series I've learned a ton of other stuff, which is weird because those morning doves assured me that there was nothing more to know. But thankfully a knowledgeable human and birding enthusiast by the name of James Curry has been teaching me otherwise, from bird distribution to variations in plumage. And honestly, this sort of thing happens to me every time I experience a Wondrium course, which is probably why I can't wait to sit down with the new series, Experiencing Shakespeare, if only to rekindle my old theatre days. You see, for me, Wondrium is where you find the answer to everything you've ever wondered about and some things you never imagined you'd wonder about. Their carefully curated collection of short and long-form videos, tutorials, how-tos, travelogues, documentaries, and more is academically comprehensive, thoroughly researched, relentlessly entertaining, and presented by engaging experts experts. In a nutshell, Wondrium is the place for minds that wander. And for my money, as we continue to embark on this new year, a Wondrium subscription is the perfect way to fulfill those resolutions about broadening your mind. And it just so happens that they're giving my viewers, you fine people, the fantastic offer of a free trial. So show your support for my channel by subscribing to Wondrium today. Visit wondrium.com slash lost in the pond right now to begin your free trial. The link is in my description below. You join me here in my basement, or more specifically, my laundry room. And behind me, we have this beautiful model right here, which, you know, it might look like a futuristic toilet, but it does the opposite of a toilet and actually cleans your clothes. That wasn't an admission of any kind. And I know what you're thinking. Ooh, Lawrence, we have washing machines in Britain, you know, but just in a British accent. And yes, of course we have washing machines in Britain, but this is not just any old washing machine. This, quite specifically, is a top load. And the only time that I ever heard the word top load in the UK was a laundrette, or as they say here in the Midwest, laundromat, or as they say down in Texas, washateria. But it would be very rare to find one of these top loader machines, in other words, a machine in which you put the clothes in from the top, in UK houses, and there's a very good reason for that. And that reason is, is that in most British houses, we actually keep our washers and our dryers, or sometimes a hybrid of the two, in our kitchen, under the kitchen counter. So you can't really drop clothes into it because they just land in spilt gravy. Whereas I've seen a few of these in American homes, and this one specifically becomes the first top loader that I've ever lived with. Not in the same way that you'd live with a wife or a pet, but just it, it's here and it's nice. And the good thing about it is, it's easy to use. I've actually, I've never used one, so I, I don't really know how it works. Not a toilet. And finally, next to it is this one. And despite its appearance, it's not an oven, although that would be a quicker way to dry your clothes and shrink them. This is in fact a tumble dryer. Again, I'm not gonna stand here and claim that we don't have tumble dryers in the UK. Clearly that would be a lie. But as I said a moment ago, sometimes they are hybrids with the washing machine. So you wash the clothes and dry them in the same unit. But even when we Brits do have standalone tumble dryers in our houses, they're usually pretty small. I've got to be careful of the stovetop. I've just remembered it's not an oven. And again, the reason for that diminished size is that we have to fit these tumble dryers into a kitchen. Those kitchens are usually smaller than the ones you will find in the United States. So to economize space, we shrink them down, not like in a sci-fi way, but as if they were clothes in an oven. Whereas this absolute beast is massive. Join me now as we take a tour of the inside of my tumble dryer. Can't. It, w it, it won't close. I can't close the door. It's too big. Did it. I did it. We're fine.
So obviously having a house with a basement or even an add-on laundry room of any kind means that you just got all this space to be able to justify bigger units. And that is a lot of American houses. So all that being said, I'm now gonna go and use my actual oven because I lost a little bit of weight last year and my clothes are too big. Thank you for watching this video and sharing it with all of your friends. I'm Lawrence Brown. You can follow me on Twitter at Lost in the Pond US and don't forget to subscribe to this channel so that I don't have to. The next thing you're gonna do is watch the official home tour of my house and all of the other house-related videos. Thank you to my patrons for making these videos possible. If you would like to support Lost in the Pond, you can do so today at patreon.com slash lostinthepond. Until the next video, goodbye.